Hello everybody, I am super excited to share the Next.js 13 Bootcamp. Next.js is an incredible framework that we can utilize on top of React and they just created a new version, version 13. And it is going to completely change the way that we build Next.js applications. Now, if you want to get ahead of the curb and learn Next.js, then take this course with me. This is going to be a 15 hour course that I hosted on Udemy that covers all of the different concepts that we need for Next.js 13. And we're gonna be building one incredible restaurant reservation project along the way. The first three sections of this course will be here on YouTube. So you can go ahead, go through it, give it a shot. And if you like it, you can purchase my Udemy course and I'll have a link in the description below for a promo code that is going to sell it to you for only $9.99. So if you are excited and you like it and you wanna up your Next.js 13 skills, then go ahead and check that out. Hello everybody and welcome to my Next.js course. More specifically, welcome to my Next.js 13 course. And it's important for me to say that because Next.js 13 has a bunch of different changes that completely change the way that we develop Next.js applications. And I'm super, super excited to showcase all of those changes and build out a complete project. Now let's talk about the project. What are we going to be building with Next.js? Because this is how I'm going to structure the course. We're going to build the project and along the way, we're going to learn every little thing that we need about Next.js 13. In this course, we're going to be building one project and that is going to be a restaurant reservation project. And just so you can take a quick look at it, I actually went ahead and I built it out. It's going to be a clone of OpenTable if you are familiar with it. So you can see here we have all of our different restaurants. They have reviews, etc., etc. We can go ahead and click onto a restaurant. We get this nice little loading state. We get more information about it. We can go ahead and actually search for a particular time that works for us. So let's go over here, number of people, and this is going to give us the availability once we actually hit our back end, it gives us a bunch of different availabilities. Then we can go ahead and click on it, maybe an availability that works for us. And then we get redirected right over here where we can go ahead and actually complete our reservation. So this is the project that we're going to be building. Again, you can just go to opentable.ca to kind of look at a clone of what we are building. Or I guess that's not really the clone. That's the real project. This right here is the clone. And also we're going to have a authentication system. So we're going to have a sign up as well as a sign in. So that is what we are going to be building throughout this whole project. And trust me, it is incredibly complicated. You're going to learn a lot about Next.js. You're going to go from a beginner to an expert. We're going to go in and out. We're going to go through the documentation, pretty much everything. And this is going to be an excellent project that you can put on your portfolio because we all know that availability systems, booking systems are very, very complicated and engineers that can build that really, really stand out. Now let's actually go into a, uh, a deeper dive into what we're going to be looking into with Next.js. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at the routing system. So obviously we just looked at our app that we're going to be building. It has different pages. So we're going to look at how we can route our applications. And with Next.js, we route our application with a file system. Now, what's nice about Next.js 13 is that we can do a lot more than just routing with our files. We can specify a loading state, an error state, a not found state. We can specify layouts and nested layouts. So we're going to look at how we can do that with our routing system. And once we do that, we're going to look at how Next.js goes ahead and renders our application. So we're going to compare client side rendering versus server side rendering. We're going to understand exactly what client side rendering is as well as server side rendering. We're going to look at the different components that we can create. So we can create client components as well as server components. So we're going to compare and contrast these two. We're going to figure out exactly when we need to use client components versus when we need to use server components. And then we're going to look at caching to really optimize our application. 
Then what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the back end. And this is where we're actually going to integrate a Postgres database. We're going to uh, define all of the different relations. And most importantly, from our client, we're going to start retrieving data. So we're going to retrieve the restaurant data, the reviews data. And we're going to look at how we retrieve data because it's going to be different depending on the component that we're in, whether it's a client component or a server component. So we might use endpoints in one case or and then in another case, we might not use use endpoints. So we'll look into that a little bit later. Now let's move on to authentication. So once we're done that, we're pretty much done the application. Now what we want to do is we want to authenticate our users. So over here, we're going to build an authentication system from scratch because I really, really want you to understand how authentication works. We're not going to be using Firebase. We're not going to be using Superbase. We're not going to be using any OAuth library. We're going to learn how authentication works right from scratch so it can ingrain it into your system. So we're going to learn about JWTs. We're going to learn about cookies. We're going to learn about conditional rendering. We're going to learn about permissions. We're going to learn about middleware. And if this doesn't make any sense, don't worry. Once we get to that section, we'll learn all about it. Then what we're going to do is we're actually going to implement our booking and availability system. And this is incredibly complicated. It's probably one of the most complicated things you can engineer is a booking and availability system. And trust me, I worked at a job where I had to do that and it was very, very tough. Now over here, really all it is, is algorithms. Figure out the right algorithm to uh, show the availability, figure out the right algorithm for booking. And we're not going to make this kind of a simple, okay, well, we have five seats available, so anybody can book these five seats. We're going to make this as realistic as possible. So we're going to look at, you know, the number of tables that is within a restaurant, the number of seats within that table. We're really going to go deep, deep, deep into this. And then lastly, something that is, well, often missed with a lot of courses is testing. So testing your application is very, very important. We're going to look at how we can test our Nest.js application. More specifically, we're going to go and we're going to look at unit testing as well as E2E testing, which is end-to-end -end testing. And we're going to look at all the different frameworks that we can utilize. Now, I'm super, super excited to, uh, to show you this course, for you to take this course with me and for you to learn all of the amazing new features with Next.js 13. So I'm super excited and I, hopefully you guys will come along with me. Before we get started with this course, there are some few things that we need to set up. Now, luckily, there's not a lot of things we need to set up and the things that we do need to set up are not very difficult to set up. So in order to run Next.js, the first thing that we need to have on our machine is Node.js. Now you might have Node.js already on your machine. Well, that is good, but you might not, or you might not even know. In order to figure that out, what you can do here is you can go to your terminal or your command prompt if you're on Windows, and then you can just execute the command node-v, which should give you the version of node that you have installed. In my case, I have version 16.17.0. Now, if you get an error saying that it doesn't understand what this node command is, that means you do not have node installed and you need to go ahead and install it. Now, how do you install it? Well, you go to node.js.install or node.js install, and then you go to this page right over here, which is node.js.org slash download. And you download the version for your specific operating system, whether it's Windows or Mac. I'm gonna go ahead and actually do this for Mac, just so we can go through the process together. So I'm gonna click on the installer, and then it's gonna take a few minutes. And then we're going to go ahead. Yes, this is very safe to download. It is Node.js. We're going to go here. We're going to click on the installer. And we get this little wizard here. Now, unfortunately, I can't really zoom in. So I'm going to just go over here, continue, continue. I'm going to say I, I agree to everything. We're going to go ahead and install Node. I'm going to go ahead and just put in my password. And we're going to install this piece of software and you can see it's a very, very easy wizard and it's going to be similar whether you're on Mac or Windows as again, a very, very simple installation process. Here we go. We're done. Now I'm going to move that to the trash. We are all good. So now if I went ahead and I said node version again, I should have the newest version. So you can see here now I have version 18.13.0. Uh, 
which is incredible. And of course, you can do the same thing if you want. Now, one thing that actually comes with Node is also NPM. So once we installed Node, we also have NPM. So we can also check the version of NPM. And now we have this. So that's really the only piece of software that we need to install on our machine to get started. The next thing that we're going to need is a text editor. So this is just going to allow us to, well, write code, save code, and then maybe even push code onto GitHub. So what are we going to choose? Well, I'm going to be choosing VS Code. So this is by far the most popular text editor out there. There's a bunch more out there, but if you want to follow what I am doing, I highly suggest using VS Code. Go ahead and download it, and it should give you an app and it should look something like this. So if I went ahead and opened it, you can see uh, I can, well, I have my text editor here. I can go ahead and code out my application. So that's pretty much all it is that you need to have. That's it. So once you have that set up, we're going to go ahead and start coding out this project. Let's go ahead and create our very first Next.js project. Now to figure out exactly how to do this, the best thing that we can do is to go to the documentation. So I'm on beta.nextjs.org. And yes, Next.js 13 is currently in beta. However, if there's any sort of changes that went on with Next.js, I am going to change the course as well. So the course is always going to be up to date. So yes, the creation of the course is when this is in beta, but it is always going to be up to date. You can mark my word on that. Now, the link to this documentation, I'll have it attached to the video. Again, it's going to be on beta.nextjs.org slash docs. Now, in order to install Next.js, let's go to the installation section over here. And the first thing that we need to look at is the installation requirements. So you can see the, the only real installation requirement is to have Node.js 16.8 or later. So again, you can go to your terminal, you can look at the version, and you can see I have Node 18.13.0, uh, which is, of course, greater than this. Now, if you don't have uh, Node.js installed or you don't even have this version, so it's lower than this version, version, just go ahead and install it like we did in the previous video. And then in terms of operating systems, Mac, Windows and Linux, 99.99% is using one of these three. So that should be done. Okay, so now let's go ahead and scroll down over here. And you can see that this is the command that we have to execute in order to create a Next.js application. So it's going to be npx, which we get right off the bat because we installed Node. And then we're going to say create next app at latest. And then we're going to add the experimental flag because this app directory is going to be experimental. Again, because we are in beta at this point. So let's go ahead and actually execute this. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to say npx create next. And then over here and create next app. And then over here, we're going to specify the version. Now they say at latest, I'm going to specify a specific version just so you and I can have the exact same version and we don't have any sort of errors that occurs. So we're going to say at 13.1.1 highly suggest that you have this exact version so that if there's any future updates, things don't break when taking this course. And then we're of course going to add the experimental flag. So let's go ahead and add that and we should be done. So that is going to go ahead and create a Next.js application. Now, before we actually execute this, let's move into a directory where we want this application to be in. So I'm going to go over here again and I'm going to move into my desktop directory. So I'm going to say CD and I'll say desktop. And then I'm going to go back and well, let's go ahead and execute that again. So we're going to say npx create next app. We're going to say at version 13.1.1. We're going to add the experimental flag. So we're going to go ahead and execute that now. And we'll give it some time. We'll say yes to this. Go ahead and install it. We're going to give our project a name. I'm going to call it open table clone. Something like that. So open table or maybe open table next JS because that's what we're doing. We're building a reservation system like that. So over here it says, oh, that's invalid because we can't have capital letters. Not a problem. We'll just say, well, lowercase everything. That's not an issue. So we'll just say open table next JS. So 
So let's go ahead and we're going to say yes to TypeScript. TypeScript is pretty much an industry standard. If you're not familiar with TypeScript, I'm going to explain it as much as possible. And hopefully by the end of this, uh, uh, you'll, you'll understand exactly what TypeScript is. Now, ESLint, we're going to say no to that. I don't like ESLint. Sometimes it's just pretty annoying. So we're just going to say no to ESLint. And then we're going to go ahead and install everything. Now, right away, you should see on your desktop directory or whatever directory you created the project in, a folder right over here saying, uh, open table next JS. So that right there is going to be our application. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up this folder inside of VS code. So let's go over here. I'm going to open up VS code. I'm going to create a new instance of VS code. So I'm going to say new window. Let's go ahead. And uh, if I'm running anything on this window, I'm just going to go ahead and just close these terminals here. Don't mind me. Just close these terminals, close this one as well. And then over here, you can see we have our new instance. I'm gonna go ahead and open. I'm gonna move to my desktop directory, give it some time. We're gonna go to my desktop and then we are gonna go, and I'm gonna go open table next JS. All right, there we go. So now we should be open inside of this text editor. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit, maybe just zoom out one, and that looks great to me. So you can see right away we have our application. There's a bunch of different uh, files and folders here. So you can see that there's just a bunch of different things going on. Now, what I wanna pay attention to is the package.json. Specifically, I wanna look at the different scripts and I wanna run my application. So I'm gonna say here, well, to run my application, I'm going to run npm run dev, which is going to run next dev. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my integrated terminal inside of VS code. You can do that by going right over here to terminal and then new terminal or doing command tilde if you're on Mac. I'm not really sure exactly what it is on uh, uh, Windows or sorry, it's control tilde. I'm sure it's something like command tilde on um, on your uh, Windows machine. So let's go over here and we're going to do just an npm run dev just so we can get our application set up. You can see here that now our application is running on localhost 3000. So what I can do now is I can go right over here and I'm just going to go ahead and just paste in localhost 3000. So let's go ahead and paste this in. And if we get some sort of app, that means everything is running correctly. So as you can see here, we get this default application. Now this default application might change for you. Again, this is in beta. Uh, uh, so if it's different than mine, that's completely fine. As long as the, the whole overall structure is the same, everything should be okay. And anyways, if you installed the exact same version as me, actually this should be exactly the same. But you can see we get this nice default application. So let's go ahead and start exploring this application in the next video. Let's go ahead and explore exactly what we got here. Now, our UI is telling us to go to the slash app slash page.tsx file in order to start editing our app. So let's go ahead and do that. So you can see our next application. It has a bunch of different files and folders by default, but it has this app directory. And this is where we are primarily going to be working. So I would say around 70% of our code is going to live inside of this directory and 30% is going to live outside it. So again, we're primarily going to be working in here. So let's go ahead and actually open this up. And you can see right over here, we have a bunch of different files and folders. So we have a CSS file, we have TSX files, and we have a bunch of different things that we'll talk about in great, great detail a little bit later. But now what I want to do is I want to focus in on the page.tsx. And you can see that this right here is just a normal React component. So what we're doing here is we're just creating a component called home and we have some JSX. And of course we can go ahead and start removing and editing our JSX. And if I were to do that, let's just remove everything we have here. Let's just create an H1, say hello my friends i am glad you want to learn next 13. that's it so a nice little title here and once i change this uh, jsx 
you can see that our application is changing. So you can see that, well, something is linked. So our page.tsx is linked to our application. And we'll explore exactly what the page.tsx is doing in great, great detail, along with all of these other files. Do not worry. But for now, this is what I want you to know. All right, so let's go ahead and actually move on to the next video. So this is what we have thus far, and this is what we want to get to. And I'm on opentable.ca at this point. Now, in order to get from this to this, we're going to need to write a lot of HTML, or in our case, JSX, and a lot of CSX because there's just a bunch of HTML structures and a bunch of styling that we need to do. We need to build this nav and style this nav. We need to build these cards and style these cards. Now, if you're not interested in building the HTML and the CSS, completely fine. I 100% agree with you, that is A-OK. -okay. In a later video, I'll show you exactly what steps you need to take in order to skip that particular section and just move on to the next JS side of things. However, right now, what I want to do is I want to talk about exactly how we're going to be styling our application because there's different ways to style it. And I think right now, the best way to style an application is with a library called Tailwind CSS. So this is going to be a wonderful CSS library that is going to allow us to style these UI elements by providing these class names on our HTML elements. So as you can see here, they're changing the different class names and that's going to change the UI overall. And what's nice about these class names is that they're very, very similar to the ones that you would see in normal CSS. So for example, PT6 is going to be padding top of six. So let's go ahead and actually install this onto Next.js. So this is the installation guide. Tailwind has an installation guide for Next.js, which is really, really cool. So let's go ahead and follow these steps. So the first thing that we need to do is create a project. So create a Next.js project. We actually already have one, so we can skip this step. Now what we need to do is we need to install Tailwind as well as some other libraries. So let's go ahead and copy this. I'm going to go ahead and just copy that right there. I'm going to open up a new terminal and I'm going to go ahead and paste it. Now, before I do that, I want to install some specific versions just so you and I can have the exact same versions and there's going to be no kind of uh, error that might occur in the future. So I highly suggest that you do the exact same thing. So for Tailwind, I'm going to go right all the way to Tailwind. I'm going to say at, and I'm going to say at 3.2.4. And then for post CSS, I'm going to say at 8.4.20. And for auto prefixer, I'm going to say 10.4.13. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and install these as dev dependencies. So that's good, everything is installed. Now the next step is to initialize our Tailwind app. So we're gonna say mpx tailwind uh, css init-p, and that should create two files for us. So it should have a tailwind.config.js file, as well as a postcss.config.js file. Now the postcss we're not gonna touch, however, we are going to touch the tailwind.config.js file. So let's go over here. And the first thing that we have to specify is exactly where we want Tailwind to apply these CSS classes to. Now, again, we're going to be primarily working inside of this app directory. And actually, all of our components are going to be in this directory. And this is where, well, all of our CSS is going to need to be applied to. So this is where we're going to specify. We're going to specify any file that is a JS file, a TS file, a TSX file that is inside of this app directory. We want those CSS uh, styles from Tailwind to apply. So we're going to go over here. And we're going to say inside of this content directory, I'm going to specify the path to the app directory. So I'm going to say app and then I'm going to say star star anything that's in there, anything that is a and we'll say over here, uh, anything that is a dot JS file dot TS file dot JSX file or dot TSX file. 
we want you to just utilize the Tailwind styles. So that's pretty much all it is that we need to do. So let's go ahead and save that. And let's move on to the next step. So over here, that's exactly what we did here. That's, that was step three. So now what we can do is we can move on over here and I'm going to go ahead and grab these things and we need to add them into the globals.css file. So I'm going to go ahead and grab these styles, these directives, and we are going to go to the app. We're going to go to globals.css. I'm going to paste those in there. All right. And at that point, that's pretty much it. So now we can actually start utilizing Tailwind. So let's go over to here and I'm going to go back to the app.tsx file and let's start utilizing these classes. Now to be familiar with these classes, uh, you can always go to the Tailwind documentation and let's say you want to change the text color. It would just say something like text color and you would see all of the different classes. You can see here we have text uh, let's use a, a better color because I don't even know what color that is. Let's say I want this red color. I can say red, uh, a text red 500. I can use that class and it utilizes this color over here and you can see the color right here. Maybe I want a darker color. I would say 700. So again, you would get familiar with this as we go. But now what we can do is we can say something like text blue 400. And if I were to do that and go to my application, and if I were to do a nice little refresh, uh, I highly suggest one thing that you do is just restart your server. Just do an NPM run dev again. And the styles should apply at that point. So let's go over here. And there we go. So you can see here the styles have indeed applied. It also changed the font size as well. Now, one last thing that I would like to do is I want to have just the font sizes be modified by me personally. All the other styles, you can do it, you can style them, but the font sizes, I want to, uh, uh, I want to specify them. So over here, what we can actually do is we can say font size, or if you want, again, change anything that we want, you can do whatever it is that we want, but I want font size. And I want to specify the classes and the value of each particular class just for the font size. So over here, what we can say is font size for maybe too, too small is something like 10 pixels. We can also say X small is 12 pixels. And then maybe small is 13 pixels. And then over here we can say reg, maybe like the regular size, that's gonna be 15 pixels. Then we're gonna say large. And then we're gonna say 18 pixels for large. And then maybe we wanna have you know, some really large ones like 2XL, which is gonna be, we'll say 22 pixels. And let's go, we have to actually put this in a, in a string because it's a, it's, a, um, it's a key that starts with a number. So let's go ahead and actually just copy this a few times. So we'll just say here three, four, five, six, seven. And over here, now what we can do is we can add, for example, this one will be 25, this one will be 32, this one will be 40, and then 50, and then 70. So now we have modified the font sizes. So now what we can do here is we can go right over to our class and we can say text of 7XL. And then over here, you can see right away, we get this really, really big thing. So again, if you ever want to modify a particular uh, uh, class, you can do that in this way. But this is really the only one that we're going to modify. The other ones, we're just going to be utilizing the default. Okay, so that's pretty much all it is that we need to do. Now we need to go ahead and start building out the UI. But don't worry, I'll give you the option to skip that section if you want to. But nonetheless, let's move on to the next video where I explain those options. So we hit the point in this course where we're going to have to start building some HTML as well as CSS that is not really going to be involving Next.js quite a bit. And I know for a lot of people that could be annoying. You came here to learn Next.js. You didn't want to build HTML elements. You already know how to do that and you don't want to style them. You already know how to do that. So I understand that, I completely understand that. However, there are people that don't like to skip sections and they like to build things from scratch. Even if that means, yes, I want to go ahead and write the HTML as well as the CSS together. So for those two people, I am going to give you options that you can choose that is going to satisfy you. So 
For option number one, what you can do is you can code the HTML as well as the CSS with me if you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a bunch of index.html files that is going to contain all of the different styles. And then after we're done that, we're going to just start cutting and pasting it into the app directory. Now, if you want to build those with me, go to the bottom of the course to the appendix A, and this is where we're just going to build the HTML. Now, if you're not interested in that, you don't want that, you don't want to do CSS, I'm, I'm here for Next.js and Next.js only, then what you can do is you can download those HTML files that are going to be attached to this video, just put them, plop them anywhere in the root directory, and then we can go ahead and just start cutting and pasting different components into the app directory. So choose whatever it is that you feel comfortable with. You can do whatever it is that you want. No hard feelings if you choose to download. And if you choose to code with me, well, I'm, uh, I'm not happy or unhappy. You can do whatever it is that you want. At this point, you should have an HTML folder inside of your root next.js directory that contains five different HTML files. So it doesn't matter if you downloaded it or you coded it out with me in the appendix section, you should have these five and they should exactly be the same. Now, all of these files over here are going to represent different pages within our application. So this one right here is going to be the home page. So whenever we go to the home page, we want to render this. Whenever we go to the reservation page, we want to render this, etc., etc. Let's actually go ahead and take a closer look into it. So for the sake of argument, let's assume that we are not in a development environment. We went ahead and we uh, hosted our application and we gave it the domain name of opentable.ca. So it's not localhost 3000 anymore, it's opentable.ca. And this is just for the sake of clarity and example. So as soon as a user goes to opentable.ca, what we want to do is we want to render the homepage.html file. Not really this file itself, but we want to render the HTML that is within this file, or in our case, it's going to be the JSX, as well as these uh, styles. So this is what we want to render. That's when they go to our homepage. Now let's say they went to our homepage and then they did a search then that's going to redirect them to the open table slash search page. And there we want to render the HTML inside of the search page dot HTML. So you can see here that we're changing the route of our application. And because we're changing the route of the application, we're changing the HTML. Now let's go ahead and let's say they're interested in a particular restaurant. So they click on that restaurant and let's say that restaurant is Shake Shack. That's just a burger joint. I don't believe it's in Canada, but there are some in the States. And so that is going to redirect them to this page. So open table slash restaurant and then slash Shake Shack. Now this right over here is in bold and in yellow because this is dynamic. They could have picked any restaurant. They could have picked, um, I don't know, McDonald's. Obviously you're not gonna make a reservations in McDonald's, but you know, you guys get the point. They could have clicked on McDonald's or Burger King or whatever. And then this right here would have changed to McDonald's, to Burger King, to whatever it is. So this right here is dynamic, but you still have to provide us with something. You can't do something like slash restaurant and then that's it. It has to be slash restaurant slash something and that something has to be a restaurant name. Now, whenever we get to this particular route, then we want to render the HTML and CSS in the restaurant details page. So I hope that makes sense. Now, let's say before we go ahead and reserve, we want to check out their menu. So as a quick reminder, let's go here to real the real open table. And let's go over here. I'm going to go back to this restaurant that I found. And let's, uh, so I clicked on this restaurant. It redirects me over here. And you can see that within this restaurant, we have these options over here. So we can look at the experiences. We can look at the popular dishes. We can look at the menu. So we're going to have this within our application as well. It's already coded in the HTML, this nav bar. So whenever we click on that menu, then it's going to redirect us to this page. So slash open table slash restaurant slash Shake Shack, which is the restaurant name itself, and then slash menu. And that should render the restaurant menu page dot HTML. Now, the last thing that we want to do is let's say we're satisfied. We're extremely happy. I want to reserve. 
Well, I click on a specific time that works for me. That's going to redirect me to the slash reserve slash Shake Shack. Again, this is dynamic. This could, could be any restaurant that we want to reserve to. And then that should, of course, render the HTML within the reservation page HTML. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that's clear what we're trying to do. I haven't told you how to do it yet. Hope it makes sense that you understand that. In the next video, we'll talk about exactly how we can create these endpoints and start rendering these HTML files within Next 13. All of the different pages that we want within our Next application, now it's time to implement it. So before we actually go on and start coding things, let's go ahead and remind ourselves how we would do something similar to this in React.js. So in React, we would do this routing programmatically. So we would install React Router. We would use these components, the switch component, as well as the route component to define the path. So for example, here we have the root path. And then over here, we're saying, well, whenever we're on the root path, I want to go ahead and render this home component. Whenever we're on the search path, let's render this search component. Whenever we're on the slash restaurant slash slug path, and slug is like the name of the restaurant then i want to render the restaurant details component and to define dynamic routes we would have these colons before the route name so this right here is dynamic it can be whatever it is that we want it can be shake shack could be mcdonald's can be whatever and over here same with the uh, menu as well as the reserve component we define the the path and then over here we define the component that we want to render whenever we're on that path now this is known as defining your routes programmatically. Now in Next.js, this is not how we do things. Instead with Next.js, we have file based routing. So let me go ahead and explain what I mean by that. So as a quick reminder, in our Next.js application, we have that app directory. And I told you we're going to be doing primarily most of our work inside of this directory. Now, when we first got this directory, we had a file in there called the page.tsx. And we noticed that this was the page that was rendering our HTML, our JSX. And to kind of prove that to you, let's go right over here. And sorry, this is just my example. I'm gonna go right over here and I'm just gonna render an H1. Again, I'm inside of the app directory, inside of this page.tsx. I'm gonna say, hello there, everyone. So hello there, everyone. And then whenever I go to the root of my application, let's go ahead and save that. You can see right away we get hello there, everyone with this kind of ugly uh, 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 pattern here. But nonetheless, of course, I can change this. I can add, you know, a button if I wanted to just hello. And, and you can see here that everything is rendering appropriately. Okay, so this is the component that is going to render whenever we're on our root application. However, uh, however, when we went to a different page that is not our uh, a root page, you can see here that we get a 404, this page is not found. So what is going on here? Well, because this page.tsx file, and this page uh, file name is very, very important, because this page.tsx files is in the root of the app directory, this is going to be the component that is going to render whenever we go to the root of our application. Meaning that, let's say, we go to opentable.ca with no other slashes, with no routes. We're going to render this page.tsx file. Now, let's say that we want to render a, you know, another page.tsx file whenever we go to the slash search route. Well, in a case like that, we're going to have to define a new directory inside of our app directory. And then within that directory, we need to add a new page.tsx file. And that directory is going to look something like this. So we're going to add a new folder in there called search. And notice that the route here matches the name of the folder. So we have this search folder. And then within it, we have another page.tsx. So now whenever we go to open table slash search, what's going to happen is next is going to look inside of the app directory. It's going to look for a folder called search. And then once it finds it, it's going to render the page.tsx that is inside of it. So I hope this is making sense. So again, 
If I go to opentable.ca, uh, we're not going to render this one right over here. We're not going to render this page component. Instead, we're going to render this page component. However, if we go to opentable.ca slash search, search, then we're going to render this one right here. So I hope that makes sense. I kind of forgot to add the search there. Okay, cool. So now let's talk about what if I want to go to opentable slash restaurant slash Shake Shack. So you can see here we have our app directory, we have the page.tsx, we also have the search, I just closed off the file. Within that, we also have the page.tsx file. So now what, what are we gonna do in order to have slash restaurant slash Shake Shack? Well, in this case, we're gonna add a new directory and that's gonna be called restaurant. And then within this restaurant directory, we're gonna add another folder called Shake Shack. And then within this Shake Shack folder, we're gonna have our page.tsx. So again, what's gonna happen here is, well, next is gonna look at the route here, slash restaurant, slash Shake Shack. And then what we're gonna do is it's gonna be like, okay, do we have a directory called restaurant? Yes, we do. Okay, now we need to move on to the other directory. Do we have a directory called Shake Shack? Yes, we do. And now what we want to do, because we hit the end of the route, I'm going to render the page.tsx file that is inside of the Shake Shack directory. Now, if it can't find any one of these directories or a page.tsx file, what's going to happen is it's going to render this 404 page saying that, hey, nothing was found. Now let's go back to this example right over here. Obviously there is a huge problem with this. Shake Shack is going to be dynamic. It could be McDonald's, it could be whatever. So obviously we can't hard code Shake Shack within our directory. And we of course can't hard code a million different restaurants because we don't know how many restaurants we're gonna end up having. So what we need to do is somehow say that this directory over here, it is going to be dynamic. And the way that you do that is within the name of the directory, you wrap it with, well, the square braces. And then within it, you give it a variable name for that specific directory. So, so this right here is the name of the restaurant. And so we can extract that whenever we want using the name variable. So again, if you want to make things uh, dynamic, we use these square brackets. Now, a, a more common convention than using name is using slug. Again, this variable name can be whatever it is that we want. We can call it whatever it is that we want, but it's just a more common convention. Okay, so I hope that is clear. That's pretty much really all you have to know. So let's go ahead in the next video and start implementing all of these different pages. Now that we understand the concept of file-based routing, let's go ahead and create all of the different pages that we need. So let's begin with the very first page, which is just going to be the root path that we're going to render the home page.html. So of course, whenever we're on the root, what we're gonna do is we're gonna render the page.tsx that is in the root of the app directory. So this is what we are going to render, this component. And of course we see that right over here. So I can go to the root of our application. And then after a few years, you can see here, we get hello there, everyone, hello. And that's exactly the HTML that we have here. So what we can do now is just go to our homepage, just copy everything we have here and we can paste it into our home page or page.tsx file and then there we go you can see if i were to zoom out of here it's taking a little bit of time the computer's a little bit slow but you can see here there we go we get everything that we need so again once we're here we see this so now let's move on to the search page. So whenever I go to search, I want to see the HTML and CSS that is in the search page.html. Now, of course, to do this, we're going to create another directory and it's going to be called search. It has to be called search if you want to go to the search path. And then within that, we're going to create a page.tsx file. So again, whenever we go to the slash search page, what we're going to go to is the search directory and render the page.tsx that is in there. Now, of course, over here, we're going to have to create a component. So let's go ahead, export default search. We'll make this a functional component. Let's go ahead and invoke that. And we'll just do this. And then we want to return some CSS and HTML. Well, JSX really is what we want to return. So let's go to the search HTML. 
I'm going to go ahead and just copy everything here, paste it in there. And if I were to now go to slash search, enter, ta-da, you can see we get the search page. It looks a little bit not that great. And that's only really because um, the, we, we don't have a lot of cards. But you can see now we have, well, another page that we're rendering. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Now let's go ahead and, well, implement this page right here. So to implement this page, we need to have a slash restaurant directory and then a dynamic slug. So let's go ahead and implement that. So we're going to have a restaurant directory. Restaurant. And then within that, we're going to have another directory. So we're not going to have our page.tsx in here because if we have our page.tsx in here, we're going to match whenever we go to slash restaurant. That's not what we want in this case. In this case, we want to have another directory. And this one's going to be a dynamic directory called slug. And it's going to be wrapped by these square brackets. So let's go ahead and add that slug. And then within that directory, that's where we're going to have our page.tsx file. And this is where we're going to render the uh, restaurant details uh, uh, HTML. So let's just copy everything we have here. And then let's go to search, or sorry, let's go to, where's that new page that we just created? Let's go ahead and just do an export default function. And we'll say restaurant details. And then we'll go ahead and create that function. And we'll just say return. And there you go. So now we have created this uh, wonderful uh, component. So let's go ahead and just give this a quick go. So I'm going to go to slash restaurant slash restaurant. And then I'm going to go to slash restaurant slash anything. You can type whatever it is that you want in here. So I'm just going to say Shake Shack Ottawa. And once we do that, you can see we get, well, we don't get a Shake Shack information. Now, later on, we'll go ahead and actually query from the database. So this can be uh, uh, dynamic and not hard coded. But you can see here now we get information about uh, uh, the restaurant itself. So this is this is terrific. This is great. OK, so now what's left are these two. So I highly suggest that you go ahead and give these two a go on by yourself. And, you know, it'll, it'll give a lot, give you a lot of good practice. And in the next video, we'll do them together. Alrighty, so I hope you tried to give these last two a crack on your own. It's always good practice to kind of do things on your own, trial and error, and then if you get stuck, you can go ahead and watch the video. It really helps your learning progress. So let's begin with this one over here, which is uh, more challenging, but it's still relatively easy. So this uh, is, well, if you notice, is very similar to what we have here. It actually follows the exact same path. So slash restaurant slash the dynamic slug, but then there's this other directory. So to do this, all we have to do is to go over here to the slug directory and just create another folder called menu. And then within this menu, we can create another page.tsx file. That's pretty much it. Very, very simple stuff. So now again, let's go to the restaurant menu page. Go ahead and just copy everything there. And let's go to the page.tsx. Again, we have to create a functional component here. So we'll just say export default menu. And, and apologies if there's any uh, noise in the background. I'm going to close the window in the next video. Do not worry. Um, so we're going to say restaurant menu here. And we're going to go ahead and return. And we're going to return this. There we go. So that should give us. So now when we go to slash restaurant slash whatever the slug is and then slash menu, we should see their menu. Let's see what we got here. And there we go. So we see their menu. So you can see it's, it's really the same uh, uh, format and layout, except this portion right here is different. So it seems as though this restaurant only has one thing, which is surf and turf. Completely fine. Whatever. All right. So the last thing that we need to do is now slash reserve slash Shake Shack. So I hope this one is clear. It's very similar to what we got here. 
So now what we got to do is go back to the app directory and then within the app directory, I'm going to create a reserve. And what I can do if I want to create multiple directories at once, I can create a file right over here and I can say reserve. That's the first directory. And then the second directory is going to be a slug. And then within that slug, I want to have a page dot TSX. So that way I can create multiple folders, nested folders at once. So let's go ahead and create an export default function. And this one's called reserve, reserve, go ahead and return. And let's go right about here. So this is the reservation uh, HTML, copy that. And let's uh, go ahead and save that. And we should be at this point pretty much done. So now if we go to slash reserve and then we're going to go to slash whatever, we should see the reservation page. So now we have all of our different pages. It, of course, none of them are functional at this point, but we have them all. We have created everything, but still we have quite a bit of work to do. So let's go ahead and address some of the stuff that we need to do in the next few videos. Right now we have five different pages within our application, but we have no way of navigating between them other than changing the URL manually. So for example, a user that goes to our application would expect to be able to click on this card. And once they click on this card, it should take them to that restaurant details page. Of course, right now that doesn't work. Another user would expect that if I type in the city, and then go to search is going to take me to that particular page that shows me the search, but of course it doesn't work. The only real navigation that we have thus far is, well, again, going manually and saying slash search, and then we see everything that we need. Even if I click on open table to go back to the home page, nothing is happening. So obviously we don't want this. We don't want people to navigate by actually manually typing the URL. They're not going to know what pages exist. We want them to navigate within our application. So that begs the question, how do we do that with Next.js? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the documentation. So if you look at the documentation, you can see that there's two ways we can navigate between routes. So I'm going to go ahead and just really zoom in here so you can really see this. Uh, can you go away, please? Is there a way that this thing can go away? I guess not. I'm gonna have to zoom out a little bit just to really show you. I'll zoom out once more. There we go. I hope this is enough. I think this is what we had before, but you can see here that there's two ways of navigating between routes. So there's this link component and then there is the use router component. So the link component, we're going to use this component whenever we want to replace the anchor tag feature. So this has additional things that really help us out with uh, Next.js, like prefetching and client side navigation. So we really don't want to use the anchor tag, similarly to the reason why we don't want to use the anchor tag in normal React navigation. So instead, we're going to use the link component. However, we, again, there's also another way of doing things with the use route component or use router component right over here. Now we only want to use the use router hook when we want to programmatically move to another route. So within our code, maybe within a function itself, we want to go ahead and move to another route. Then we want to use the use router hook. So let's go ahead and now we'll, we'll begin with the link right over here and then we'll move on to the use router and we'll just kind of compare and contrast when we want to use them. So let's begin with the link in the next video. So we want to use the link component anywhere where we would typically use an anchor tag. So let's go ahead back to our application. And I think the best place to start is the nav bar. So you can see this nav bar right over here has this open table. And if I go to, I don't know, another page, 
So let's go to slash search. If I go to another page and I were to click on open table, I expect it to take me back to the home page. So let's go ahead and actually make this functional. Now note that every single page has its own implementation of the nav bar. Later on, we're going to clean this up. Do not worry whatsoever. We're going to create components and we're going to make this all a lot cleaner. But for now, we're going to have to actually change it for every single one. So you can see here that we have this anchor tag. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually import that link component from next link. Let's go ahead and actually do that. I like to auto import things. You can see here we get this kind of import link from next link. And now what we can do is we can actually utilize that instead of the anchor tag. And we can say that this is going to go to the slash route. So let's go ahead and actually just copy this across every single, um, uh, we're going to copy that across every single uh, uh, page that we have because each page is using the nav bar. Again, this isn't the most elegant way of doing things. Like we'll, we'll search, we'll figure out exactly how to do it in a much better light a little bit later. So we got the page, we got this here. This also needs that. We're going to go ahead and have to import every single one. All right, and let's go to the reserve. Reserve is good. Let's go here. That's good, that's good, and that's good. And that's not good. Let's go ahead and change that. And I think that should be fine. I think that was all, all, uh, all five of them. And if we missed any, that's okay. That's not that big of a deal. All right, I think we might have missed one over here. We did. So let's just go ahead and import that in there. And we'll just say a link for now. What I like to do is I like to remove one letter and then uh, it should auto import. This time it's not. Let's say import link from next link. All right, so that should do it. So now if I were to click on open table, ta-da, you can see I get redirected back. So again, no matter where I am, now I get redirected back to where I need to be. So this is really, really good. But now let's go ahead and actually do the exact same thing for pretty much everything else that we need. So whenever I uh, click on this right over here, I expect to navigate to the, the uh, uh, restaurant detail page. So let's go ahead and actually go to that particular component, which I believe resides right about here. That's gonna be in the root directory. So we're going to go to the root directory and we have this card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap pretty much everything with a link component. So we're going to say link like this and we're going to try to find where this ends, it ends right here. And then we're going to say href. And then for this, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and just hard code this in for now. So again, it's going to be slash restaurant and then slash, we're going to hard code a name. Of course, this is going to be dynamic. Uh, so let's go ahead and actually just copy what they got here. So the milestones grill, so milestones grill, something like that. Again, well, we're hard coding it for now, but later on, this should be not hard coded. But nonetheless, if I were to go over here now and were to click on this, ta-da, you can see now I am navigating there. All right, so the last piece of navigation that we need are these nav bars right here. So the overview and the menu. So this should take us to the slash restaurant slash milestone grill slash menu if I click here. And then this overview, overview should take us back to this exact same path and route. So let's go to the restaurant. I'm just going to go ahead and just say menu just so I can find that restaurant, uh, which is, I believe... Trying to find it. I think it's this one. There we go. Yes. And by the way, this one is the restaurant slash slug, and it's going to be this page.tsx. And we're going to have to do the same thing inside of this page.tsx as well. So let's go ahead and add link tags here. So we're going to say link, 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 link. Let's get rid of all this other junk. We don't need this extra line stuff. That was just some residual effect that we got because we had everything inside of a HTML file. And over here, this one will say, 
this one's gonna go to slash restaurant restaurant and then slash milestone grill and then over here we'll have another href and this one's gonna go to slash menu all right so let's go ahead and give that a quick little save and let's give it a go now so now if i were to go here click on this you can see now we're on the menu if i click back of course it's not going to work because um this nav bar doesn't it's not the same so let's go here to the menu and we're gonna have to change this up a little of course we're gonna have to have everything be components so we don't change things up like this but for now we'll just leave it like that all right so let's go ahead and save that and now we can kind of navigate across our application okay so this is really really cool i like it uh there's one more piece of navigation that we need to do and it's this one right over here but this is going to be a button and we're going to need to programmatically go ahead and uh, uh search for a particular uh or programmatically navigate to the route so let's go ahead and figure out how to do that in the next video so we talked about navigation with the link component. Now let's talk about navigation with the use router hook. And if I were to click on this, you can see the description says the use router hook allows you to programmatically change the route inside of client components. So we're going to get the use router hook from next navigation, and then we can call it wherever we want within a client component. Now, of course, you don't know what a client component is at this point, but right now what we are rendering is a server component. That's all you have to know. Again, in, in a future section, I'll describe exactly what a server and a client component is, but right now what we're rendering is a server component. So we can't really use this use router hook. In order to convert our component from a server component to a client component, what we can do is at the very top of the component, we can add the comment use client, and that's going to convert it from a server to a client component. Again, no need to understand exactly what a server and a client is. Try not to be confused about it because in a future section, we're going to go into extreme, extreme detail. But there we go. So you can see here now we have our client component and we can utilize the use router hook from next navigation. So we're going to say use router, use router. And then over here, what we can do is we can say const router is equal to use router. And we're going to go ahead and invoke that. And now we can use this router variable uh, uh, throughout our application programmatically to navigate. So a quick question that you might ask is what in the world is programmatic navigation? Well, right now, the way that we navigate is through the link component, and this is going to cause navigation no matter what. It's pretty much an anchor tag. So when we click on this, we always want to navigate. But there are some times where we want to do some checks, you know, some 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 checks if before we navigate. So, for example, let's say over here, if they put in any city or town and then they say, let's go, we want to go ahead and navigate to the search page. However, let's say if they put in something extremely silly like banana, then we don't want to navigate whatsoever. So in this case, we're going to have to define all of this through a function, and then we can go ahead and programmatically navigate using the use router component. So let's go ahead and actually do this for now. So obviously if they search banana, we're going to say, nope, no navigation. And then if they don't, if they search anything else, then yes, we're going to go ahead and programmatically navigate. Uh, so let's go over here. So the first thing we're going to need to do is define some state. So we're going to say here, uh, we're going to say uh, a location, set location. And we're going to say here that that is going to be equal to the use state hook from React. Let's go ahead and two way bind this. So let's go to here. So we're going to say value is equal to location. And then we're going to say on change. And we're going to say set location to e dot target dot value all right so that should do it now we are getting some issue here so let's see what we got so it's saying um argument of type string is not assignable to the parameter 
That uh, should be set location. Oh yeah, this should be a string. So this is just a TypeScript error. We have to make this a string here. Okay, so this is looking pretty good so far. So we got that two-way binding. Now what we can do is we can go to our button and we can say const on click. So we can add an on click function. And then what we can do here is we can say, okay, this is the programmatic navigation portion. So we can say if the location is equal to banana, then let's just return early. We don't want to do anything. However, if the location of, is anything else, we're just going to say router dot. And then you can see here we have a bunch of different methods. We're going to push and then I'm going to say slash search. So you want to push slash search onto our URL. So this again is the programmatic navigation. So we can define some code and then within our block of code, we can go ahead and navigate if we need to. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick little refresh here. So if I say uh, orange, for example, and I say, let's go, you can see we get that navigation. If I were to say banana now, you can see now we don't get that navigation. And of course, this is something that we cannot accomplish with the regular link component. All right, so that pretty much concludes our section on pages and navigation. In the next section, let's go ahead and make things clean by separating them into different components. And this is where we're going to learn the difference between server and client components. In this section of the course, what we're going to do is really organize our code by separating it into its own separate components. This is a philosophy that is understood with React and it applies with Next.js as well. So let's go ahead and begin. We're going to begin with the nav bar. So the question is, where are we going to store all of our different components? Well, I think the best way to do that is to have it inside of the app directory. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create right in the root a components directory and then any component that exists on pretty much every single page or is only used by this page right over here, this page component, we're going to store it right in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab the nav bar. I'm going to create a nav bar .tsx file. And then what we can do is we can just grab this nav. And then over here, I can say again, export default function nav bar. Go ahead and invoke that. And then we'll say return and we'll just return this. And to import the link, we'll just auto import it like so. And there we go. So now you can see we have the nav bar. And now instead of doing this, of course, we can just go ahead and auto import the nav bar. So we can just auto import that in again, the way that I like to auto import things is I just remove the last letter. And then I just put it right back and then it auto fills for me. So you can see now it's importing it from nav bar right here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and save that and we should, of course, still have the same thing. So let's do that for everything else. So we can even remove these comments. So let's go here and actually to, to quickly look at all of the different pages that, uh, uh, that we need to change, we can actually utilize that comment in the search bar. So I can say this. All right, we got to change this one right here. So let's get rid of this here. All of this, we'll get rid of that. And we'll say navbar, auto import that in, save, and that should be fine. Let's go ahead and do the exact same thing now uh, for this page. Let me go ahead and just close this a little bit. So let's get rid of everything here. And we're gonna have to go enter, just ha pass in that navbar nav bar like so save that let's do the same thing here we're going to do a quite a lot and now we can say nav bar nav bar like so get rid of this we don't need that anymore and i think that actually no we got one more i thought that was it but now we got this last one and then we can say nav bar and auto import it 
All right, so that's it. So now we can see here that we have significantly simplified our at least nav bar code, but now we have to do the exact same thing with pretty much everything else. So again, let's go back to the uh, page uh, component right over here. And you can see here we got this main tag and then we got this header. I think this header should also be its own separate component. So what we can do here is let's extract pretty much everything here. Let's just extract that all out. And then within this component, we're going to create a header component, the header.tsx. We're going to say export default. And I'm going to say export default function and then header. And then we're going to go ahead and just return everything that we got here. So you can see here that there's a lot of things that we need. We need the state, we need the use router. So we can actually extract all of these from that. And so we can go here, we can just grab the use router from uh, uh, next navigation, the use state from, from React. Oops, not that, I don't want that. I want use state, please. There we go. So that should do that. And now what we can do is we can actually make this one a client component. Again, we'll talk about this later, but for now we'll make it a client component and we can actually remove the client nature inside of this page. So now this is a server component. So let's go ahead and just remove these imports that we don't need. And then over here, what we can do is we can actually use that header. So let's just get rid of all this. And then we're going to say header. We're going to get that from the uh, slash component slash header. And if I were to save that again, everything is exactly the same. All right. So this is looking good. So now we got the cards and the card itself. So let's go ahead and actually extract all of this. Just grab this whole card and within this card, cut it. And let's go here to the component. We're going to say restaurant card dot TSX. And we're going to say export default default function restaurant card. Go ahead and invoke that or not invoke it, but we're just create the function. And we'll just return this JSX. We're missing the link component. So again, just remove the last letter and let it auto fill. And now you can see we get this auto import. So now over here, what we can do is import this restaurant card and actually place it in here. So we're gonna say restaurant card and then import that in. So you can see now it's so, so much cleaner. And we can actually remove these comments because we don't really need them anymore. Uh, and there we go. So you can see how much cleaner it is getting. So look at that. Look at that. Look how much simpler it got. Uh, I don't know why all of a sudden it started to complain. There we go. You can see that this is far, far nicer. We can also remove a lot of this other stuff here. Let's just remove everything just to really clean things up and you can see how much simpler it gets. Now this isn't a very, uh, 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 react related, uh, lecture. Um, it's, it's pretty common knowledge to, that you want to separate things into components. So let's go ahead and actually just kind of bang out the rest of the pages in the next video. And then what we're going to do is we're going to really dive into some more next related concepts. All right, my good friends, let's go ahead and bang this out as quickly as possible. So let's begin with the, so we're done with this page over here. Let's begin with the search page. Let's see if there's any components that we can utilize. So over here, we got this header and over here, we also have a very similar search bar, extremely similar actually. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this out into its own separate header, but later on, we'll figure out how we can actually kind of navigate this the way that we want to. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut this out. And because this kind of, this header is unique only to the page.tsx inside of the search directory, I'm going to create another components directory. So I'll say components right over here, and then I'll have just another header.tsx. And we'll say export default 
header and I can say for this, we'll just say function and we'll say return and I want to return this, this code. All right, so for this here now, what we can do, remove this and I can just say header. Now make sure that this is the header from the uh, components slash header that's within our directory. So it's not a dot dot slash, it's dot slash components. And over here, we can go ahead and import that in. So let's go to the search just to see that everything is fine. Actually, we can just click on this button now because we added that navigation. I think we can click on this button. What's going on? Come on button, work, work. I think, I think what's happening is it's extremely slow at this point. Come on, there we go. So you can see everything is indeed okay, or actually I didn't really save it. So, but now you can see that it's fine. All right, so the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna work on that sidebar. I think we can just grab everything here, cut it out. And this sidebar component is really only gonna live inside of the search route. So I can just put it inside of this component directory. So I can say something like search sidebar dot TSX. And then similarly here, again, export default search sidebar. I always forget to add the function. Like without fail, I always forget to do that. And then over here, we can just uh, create that function and then return this JSX. All right, so over here, uh, inside of the search sidebar, you can say search sidebar, go ahead and call that. Let's remove these comments. We don't need them anymore. Okay, again, let's do a quick save, refresh, and everything is fine. Okay, cool. So now what we want to do is, now this, this is the restaurant card. Now this restaurant card is a, a little bit different than the one that we have uh, in this page right over here. So we, we're, this is, of course is going to be a separate component. So let's go ahead and just grab everything that we got here. We'll cut it out and it's going to be within this component directory. We'll say restaurant card dot TSX. And if, and if you don't like that, you know, I'm naming things kind of similar here, you know, this is restaurant card and this is restaurant card. I get that, but it is a very common convention within next. You can see here that we have a million different page TSX and we don't really know exactly which one we're in until we look at the component or the path that it's in. So it's a very common convention and I know some people don't like it, but well, it is what it is. So we're going to say here, restaurant card, and then we're going to go ahead and call that or not call it, they keep saying call it. We're just gonna create the function itself and let's paste in everything we got here. And by the way, this should also have a link, uh, a link to link to that particular um, uh, uh, page whenever we click on it. So let's actually implement that quickly right now. So we'll just say link, get that link right over here. And this should and right over here, and we should have an href that we're just gonna hard code for now again. Later on, we'll make this dynamic because we're gonna go to a specific database. But for now, we'll just hard code restaurant.milestones or whatever. Doesn't matter what, what we call it. All right, so that's pretty much that. And then over here, we can of course render that restaurant card. Again, make sure that you render the restaurant card that is within the directory that we're currently in. So dot slash components, not dot dot slash components. And there we go. So now we can remove this. Again, looking significantly cleaner in my opinion. And there we go. So you can see everything. What the, what's going on here? So we have some errors here. And okay, so some of the styling just went wrong whenever we added this link. I'm just gonna go ahead and comment this out. We'll figure out how to do this a little bit later. For now, I just wanna focus in on, uh, on uh, this portion right here. Actually, you can see here that this should be the link, the way that I set this up. So maybe let's go here. This should be the anchor tag. So link, link. No, ah, sorry, apologies for that. So we actually do not need the link tag at the very top. Get rid of this, get rid of that. And we should have it like this. And there we go. So now if we click here, there we go, there we go. Okay, cool. So that should do it for this page. So if I were to go here, 
Um, actually, wait, what am I doing? Uh, this is the restaurant card. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go to the search page. Yeah, so that should do it for this search page. You can see it's significantly cleaner. Now let's move on to the restaurant directory. And then within the restaurant directory, let's take a look at this page.tsx. So first of all, we have this kind of main header that I think we can um, extract into its own component. So this is gonna live right here in this restaurant directory, restaurant.slug actually. Let's make sure that we're in the slug directory and let's create a components directory in here. And also here we'll create another header.tsx. So we'll say export default header oh i always forget it always forget it function header and then we'll say return and we'll return this jsx and over here we'll say header again make sure that you're in your directory so it's always dot slash so now what we can do is we can remove these comments, remove this, and remove that. So again, let's just take a quick look at how this looks right now. So if I were to click here, everything still looks fine. All right, so now we've hit the uh, description portion. So I think we can leave this, we can leave this. Then we have the restaurant nav bar. So let's kind of cut that out. And this we'll have here, we'll say restaurant, nav bar dot tsx export default restaurant nav bar <laughs> oh my goodness is there a time where i don't forget the function let's go here function return and then let's auto import the link save that let's go back here so over here, what we can do now is utilize the restaurant nav bar. There we go. Get rid of this, get rid of that. And then we have a bunch of different components that we need to create. So again, let's bang them out. Actually, one thing that we can do to really speed up the process is uh, download the extension. So there's an extension on VS Code that we can download because I always seem to mess up uh, the creation of these uh, functional components. So I'm gonna go over here to uh, uh, extensions. I'm gonna say react. And then I believe I can install this extension right over here. And what this extension is gonna allow us to do is to utilize um, like different snippets to create functional components. And it doesn't seem like it says it over here, but let's just see. So this is the React uh, functional component. This one to this one. Okay, actually maybe this is the one that allows us to have snippets. So let's see here, uh, right here. So we would say FFC to create a functional component. So I'm gonna go ahead and just download this one as well. I'm not really sure which one it is. So I'll just download both. Okay, so now I'm just gonna close everything here because we got a bunch of stuff going on. We're on this page. Okay, so now let's move on to the title. So let's create a title component. So this component, we're gonna say title.tsx. I'm gonna say, what was it, FFC? And there we go. So now we have, that is hideous. That is not what I wanted. Let's try RFC. RFC is the one that I wanted. Okay. So you can see here that that works. We actually do not need to import React though. So we can remove that. And we can just now just copy that, paste that in there. And now what we can do, we have export default title. So now what we can do is we can just utilize the title. All right. And now we can do the same thing for the rating. So again, rating.tsx and then RFC to create a functional based component you Can paste that in there. Oh, this is a lot faster. And then now let's go here You can get rid of this. You can say rating. 
and then we got the description then we got the images and then we got the reviews and we're done so let's go ahead and create these quick so again in here i'm going to say description dot tsx similarly let's also create a ratings dot tsx and then we're also going to create a uh, images dot tsx and i believe we also need the reviews dot tsx all right so we got all these different tsx files that we need to populate so we're going to begin with the description so let's grab the description we'll say rfc paste that in there get rid of that save that now we can auto import in the description so description there we go and then over here same same ordeal uh, we got the images so let's just grab all of these images separate them into its own component so over here images rfc create that functional component and then here now i can just say images all right and then the last thing that we need is the reviews so let's just grab everything here and we'll go to the reviews so where are the reviews 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 did i create that yes rfc save that and now let's go back to our page.tsx and we can say reviews all right and that sums it up so that sums at least this portion up right over here there we go so we're done with this one so we're done with this so now let's go ahead and work on this portion so this portion we can actually extract pretty much the whole thing so this whole thing here this is the reservations card so we can go ahead and just extract this whole thing cut it out and uh, we can get rid of all those comments now and over here we can just say reservation card dot tsx and over here you can say rfc get rid of that and over here paste everything in there and then right in here we can say reservation card all right you can see that we're pretty much done at this point you know see how much cleaner that was like look at that the powers of components so there are a few more pages that we need to also work on so there's the menu page that we need to work on and then also the form page this video is getting a little bit long so let's go ahead and tackle that in the next video there are a few more pages that we need to tackle. So the first page is going to be the menu page. Now, a lot of this is going to utilize the same components that we have created over here. So as you can see here, it's using the nav bar. It's also going to use the exact same header. So what we can do here is we can just remove this header portion right here. And I can just grab this header. I think it's a header like so and yeah okay so that looks pretty good and of course the best thing that we can do is to actually navigate to that menu page and always visualize exactly what we see here all right so now over here this is the description portion we can remove this comment we don't need that anymore so over here this is going to be the restaurant nav bar so let's go over here so again this is going to be the same so restaurant uh, not restaurant menu restaurant nav bar so this portion again is exactly the same and this is where it just diverges a little bit so now we, what we do here is we have the menu so the menu is going to be pretty similar to what we got here so we got the restaurant nav bar so we got the menu here and then we got the menu cards and you can see here that we show this menu um, so over here what we can do is we can extract the menu card itself probably the best thing we can do here is extract this menu card itself or actually you know what we'll just grab this entire thing here cut that out and we'll just make that its own component so we'll just say menu.tsx rfc and we'll create this menu component and then here we can just say 
menu auto import that now we can always have a component within a component so i think it's a good idea to probably have a menu card component so here we'll create another component called menu card dot tsx rfc and then let's create that and then over here we can have a menu card and there we go so now we have our menu card and we've pretty much finished this entire section so let me uh why is it yelling at me here there we go so you can see here that this uh this page and this page are actually very similar so we have the main we have the main we have the main we have the main then we got the nav bar and then we got the header that's it's pretty much identical and then we have this div and then this div so then we got this div and then this div and then we got what's going on right over here uh so so you can see it's 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 very very identical to what we have before now this div is width of 100 though so it's a little bit different all right so let's go ahead and remove that and we'll go ahead and save this and we can see everything looks the same so now the last thing that we need to work on uh the last page is going to be the uh we're gonna go it's gonna be the where is it the reserve page so over here you can see there's quite a bit going on here so the first thing that i want to do is i want to of course extract the, the header so let's grab this header Again, you can always see where they are from the first and last comment. And we're going to create a components directory. And then within this, we'll have a header.tsx, RFC, paste that in there, remove this. And over here, we'll say header like so. Again, make sure you're importing it from the exact directory that you're in because we have a lot of header components. So we can remove this and we can remove this now. So now over here, I think we should extract all of this into its own component as well. So let's grab all of this. This will be like a form component. So over here, we're gonna say form.tsx RFC. And then over here, we'll just paste in that form and we'll remove this. And at this point, we can just do form like so. So form, and there we go. So that, that's it. That's pretty much all it is that we have to do. Just to double check, we'll say reserve slash whatever. And we should see everything is okay. All right, so now we have completely cleaned out all of our different uh, pages. You can see now it's significantly cleaner and much easier to work with. So now let's actually start moving right back into the more next JS side of things. We created all of those different components, but now let's discuss in great detail how they're rendered in Next.js. So before we do that, let's first discuss the different rendering methods that are very common. And let's begin with what even is rendering? Well, let's go back to this application right over here, our application that we have created. And you can see when I go to localhost 3000, let's go to the root of the application, I eventually get served a bunch of HTML as well as CSS. So I get served this card, I get served this input, I get served a bunch of HTML. So how is the client, which is my browser here, getting that HTML? Well, there's two different ways that we can get the HTML. It's either going to be through the client side or the server side. And this is known as client side rendering or server side rendering. So let's quickly discuss exactly what client side rendering is. So in client side rendering, you go to a particular page, let's say the root page, and then the client makes a request to the server of our application. The server then gives it an empty HTML page that it goes ahead and renders, and then it gives it a JavaScript bundle, and then the client parses that JavaScript bundle to start rendering the HTML that it needs. Now, a lot of people get a little bit confused by this, so let me go ahead and quickly demonstrate what I mean here so let's go right over here let's go to this restaurant right here or this this page and we can do this with any page so let's go and inspect this I'm just gonna let's close this up again so I'm gonna go over here 
I'm going to right click and I'm going to inspect and I'm going to render some HTML onto this screen through the client. So let's go to the console right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an H1. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. So to create an H1 through the client with JavaScript code, I can say something like const H1 element is equal to document dot. And I can say here, create element. And then I want to create an element that is an H1. So now I have created this H1 element. All right, there we go. So you can see we got that. Now, of course, I can add some values to this. I can say h1 element dot value. And I can say hello. And now if I say h1 element, well, we still have an empty h1 element. That's fine. Whatever. I, I, for, I honestly forget how to add values to it. But, but this is how we do it programmatically through code. Now what I can do is I can actually append this into, well, the client itself. So let me go ahead and try to append it into this card. So I'm going to go back to this element right here. I'm going to try to find the a unique identifier for this card. So I'm going to go here and I am going to, let's just grab this class. I'm going to grab this class. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find this element by class. So let's go here, console, and I'm going to say, const container element and that's going to be document dot and it'll say find find or is it get elements we'll say get element get elements by class name because we can have multiple elements but in reality we only really have one element so we're going to go ahead and get that and now what we can do is we can say container element and then we'll really only have one. So we can just say zero and then dot append and I can append my H1 element. And so now if I were to enter this and let's go back to our element section here, we should have an H1 element, an empty H1 element right here. So you can see we have created this element client side through JavaScript code. So that is what client side rendering is. Again, you get an empty HTML file, you render that empty HTML file, the server then gives you a JavaScript bundle, the client starts to parse that bundle and start rendering all of the HTML with that value. So again, that's client side rendering. Server side rendering is a little bit different. So with server side rendering, you're not getting an empty HTML file. The actual HTML file is for each particular page is going to be already full with all of the components, all of the different HTML elements, all of the different classes that it needs. And then the server goes ahead and sends it off to the client. And then the client doesn't have to parse it, it just goes ahead and renders it. So that's the difference between client side and server side rendering. So Next.js actually uses a combination of both. We can have client components and we can have server components. Maybe you might be wondering why do we want to choose one over the other? Well, let's take a look here. So server components is the default component. So any component that you put in your app directory, that is going to be a server component. And in terms of performance, it is probably the best uh, component that you can utilize. You should always be using server components. Uh, 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 you should always be using server components unless you have a very specific reason not to. And we'll get to those reasons a little bit later. So why are server components really good? Well, server components are going to be components that are rendered in the server and then sent to the client. So that means that any dependencies that uh, those server components utilize inside of the server can actually stay in the server. And we don't have to send those really large dependencies to the client. And that improves performance. It causes initial loads to be significantly faster because again, the client doesn't have to parse through all of this JavaScript and our server component has access to the back end. We can do a bunch of things in the back end that we can't do with client components. 
So client components, we can utilize them by using the use client directive at the very top of the component. And we've seen this before, we've done this before, and now I'm explaining exactly what it is. So any, again, any component that is in the app directory by default is a server component. If you wanna convert it to a client component, we use this use client directive at the very top. So again, it would look something like this. So if I wanna convert this header, to a client, I would just say use client like that. And now this would be a client component. All right. So when do you want to use it? Well, you want to use client, uh, uh, you want to use client components when you want to use client hooks like use state and use effect. And the overall goal is to use as small amount of client components as possible. So that's the overall goal here. Now, of course, you can always mix and match. So you can have a server component over here and the server component can render a client component. And then over here, a, a another server can component can render another server component and then a client component, a client component and so on and so on. So you can see that we can do all of these different things. Now, one general rule is that if you have a server component, it can render a client component, but then a client component cannot render a server component. So you can see here, we have this client component and it's not rendering any more server components. So again, server can render the client, but client, if you wanna render, if you wanna have any other children within it, then it always has to be client components. And there is some exceptions. The exception is if a client component is rendering a server component that is passed in as a children prop, that is going to be the only exception. And that's, and that's why you can see this scenario over here. So we have a client component that's rendering server components, but these server components are actually passed in as children props. Okay. So now that we understand that, let's look at a quick little summary of when you want to use server components versus when you want to use client components. So in terms of data fetching, especially data fetching, when uh, you want to use something like use effect, like upon rendering of the component, upon rendering of the page, you want to do that in server components because that server component is already in the backend. So it has access to the ORM, it has access to the database connection, and it's just a lot more efficient than making an HTTP request. So you want to do that with server components. So access to backend resources directly, obviously the server component. If you want, want to have access to sensitive keys like the token API, of course, that is going to live in the server. And while well, your server component also lives in the server, so it's going to have access to it. And of course, keep large dependencies on the server, reduce client side uh, JavaScript. So any large dependencies that typically, if you were to have everything on client side, you can actually now keep it on the server rather than the client. Now, in terms of the client components, if you have any sort of interactivity, of course, you cannot do that on the server. You can't have a click handler on the server. It has to be on the client. So again, if you have any interactivity, you're going to use a client component. Now, if you have any you'll use state, use reducer, any of these lifecycle hooks, again, that is something that is very specific to the client. You can't have a use effect on the server. So that is going to be a client component. And then, oh, of course, any browser only API. So if you're trying to make an HTTP request uh, uh, from, the from the browser, you're going to use a client custom hooks to use these APIs again from the client and then use react class components. I don't know why anybody would want to use uh, react class components, but if that's something that you want to do, then, well, you want to use client components. So I hope that is clear and it makes sense. Now let's go ahead and actually start refactoring all of our different components to server components or client components, depending on what we need. Now that we understand the difference between server components and client components, let's just go through every single component that we created and let's define it as either a server component or as a client component based on the criteria that I mentioned in the last video. So let's begin with the components directory that's in the root and let's look at the header. So when we look at the header, we can see here that we got the use router, we got the use state, we already defined this as a use client. But one thing that we can actually do to optimize this, because remember, we want to have as little JSX be a client component as possible. 
really it's this portion right over here that is the client component. This header where we have find your table for any occasion, this can actually be a server component. So what we can do is we can create another component called search bar. So we'll say search bar.tsx and we'll just say RFC to create a functional based component. And we're gonna go here. Let's go ahead and just copy that. And let's paste that in there. And now we got our little functional base component. Let's go ahead and just copy this over now. And we're going to go over here and just paste all that in. Again, my trick to just import things in is just remove the last letter and just type it back in and you get this auto import effect. And then because this is using uh, router and, and use state, what we can do now is we can say that this is a client component. Now over here, we can actually remove this. We can remove the use client and make it a server component. And what we can do is we can actually remove this whole search bar as a whole and we can render the search bar. So remember a server component can have a client component. This works completely fine. It's just that a client component can't render a server component that is not a children prop. And we'll look into that a little bit later. Okay, so we have optimized this quite a bit now. So we got the header, we got the nav bar. Uh, the nav bar, I would say the nav bar is going to be a client component. And the reason for this is because we have this interactivity. Oops, let me get rid of my LinkedIn. And let's go over here and let's go to open table. So we have this interactivity. It's going to be very similar to, to this. So this sign up and sign in button, when we click on it, we want to showcase some sort of modal like so. So at the end of the day, this probably is going to be a client based component unless we make the buttons themselves client based component. And that's probably actually a better idea. So we'll think about that later. We'll, we'll get there in the authentication section, but it's, it's good to think about things. Now, in terms of the restaurant card, this will always be a server component because all it is is just showing data. And this link right over here doesn't need to be. It's just like an anchor tag. It's, it's not an on click handler. So this can always be a, a, a server component. Of course, this is going to be a client component. Now, let's go over to the search. Let's just take a look at the header here. So the header is very similar in that we have this input. We also have this uh, 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 button and this is going to be a uh, client component. Now, in order to actually optimize this, what we can do is we can just legitimately use what we got here. So we can use this, uh, this uh, search bar. So let's go ahead and just get rid of everything here. Um, let me just double check. Yeah, this class is seem pretty much the same. So what we can do here is we can just use this search bar. And there we go. So now we have optimized that. We're rendering a client component within this header. Okay, so let's look at the restaurant card. I think very similarly, this is going to always be a server component. We have a link tag over here. That's fine. And then in terms of the search sidebar, this one's a little bit trickier because it really depends on how we're going to have our filtration. So if we are going to have click handlers on these paragraph tags for now, then what we're going to do is, yes, this is going to be a client component. But if we're only going to change query parameters, which we'll talk about a little bit later, then maybe not. Maybe this is not going to be a uh, uh, client component. All right, so that's the search. Let's take a look at the restaurant components. Just, just a quick breeze. Okay, this one's a server component. This one's a server component. There's going to be no interactivity. This one, you're just looking at the images. Now, if we wanted to do a thing where we click on the image itself and then it shows maybe a larger modal, then maybe, okay, this is a good case for a client component. But for now, I think it's fine like so. Uh, then menu, yeah, that's fine. Menu card, that's fine as well. The ratings, that's the server component. Uh, let's get rid of this, we don't need that. An extra folder. The reservation, so where were we here? Let's go back to the rating.tsx. So the reservation, so that is going to be, okay, so this right here is actually gonna be a, the reservation card, that's gonna be a client component. Might as well just make it right now because we're definitely gonna have click handlers. We're gonna click for a button. We're gonna make an API request. So this is gonna be a client component. 
over here we got the reservation nav bar this is a server component the reviews this is going to be for now a client component unless we want to add the ability for reviews and then the title is going to be a, a server component all right so this is uh, good so i hope you guys get the, the the gist of it and as we go on and as we start playing around with different um different components and start actually building our application we'll start changing it up from server to client from client to server all right so that pretty much sums up this section let's move on to the next section where we talk about layouts welcome everybody to a brand new section now i want to start off this section by saying the general rule of programming don't repeat yourself you don't want to do that because at the end of the day, if you repeat yourself consistently and you have to make a change, you're going to have to make that change in all of those different places. Not the best idea. Now, it seems as though here we're not repeating ourselves. You know, we only have one component, the nav bar, the header, the restaurant. You know, we've extracted everything to their own components so we can utilize them throughout our application. Of course, that is good, but let's take a look at our page.tsx file. So every single page.tsx files, we're going to take a look at it and we're going to try to examine any patterns that we see. So I am in the page.tsx that is in the app directory, so the root directory. So we have this main tag that has a BG gray of 100, min, height, you know, we have this W screen. And we also have this other main tag that has this max W screen, uh, margin auto, BG white. And then we have our nav bar. And then we have this main tag right over here that has a header and then the restaurant cart. Okay, so this looks all normal. This is fine. Let's go ahead and move on to the search page. So the search page has, well, very similar uh, uh, JSX. So it has this main tag right over here. This is exactly the same with the exact same stylings. So you can see exactly the same. And then similarly, this one too, exactly the same. So exactly the same as this one. And then we have this nav bar. Okay, that's exactly the same as what we have. Then we have this header. Now the header, I know it's called header, but it, it is a different header. So this header is in the search directory, whereas this header is in the app directory. But uh, everything else here is different, I would say. So let's move on over here. Well, we have this main tag, main tag, nav bar. Again, the header is different and then Everything else here is different. Okay, so this is the same, this is the same, this is the same. Everything else is different. Let's take a look at this. Oh, wow. This is the same, this is the same, this is the same. Everything else is different. So what is going on here? Well, it seems as though we're following this pattern for every single page. We have the main tag with these styles. We have this other main tag with these styles. And then we have a nav bar component. And then right under the nav bar component, we have the stuff for that particular page. So this stuff is always going to be different. But this stuff over here, these three components or these three JSX elements, they're always going to be the same. Now, the trouble is, is let's say later on in, in life, and this, this always happens with tech applications, we're always iterating things, we're always changing things to provide better user experiences. So let's say that we found that, uh, you know what, a BG of white doesn't provide the best user experience. Maybe a BG of pink, 400. That, that provides the best user experience. People love it. People like looking at it and it causes them to book. So if I were to do that, now I would have to actually change this uh, color on all of these pages. I would have to go over here, change it over here, and then so on and so on. So you can see, of course, that is the issue here that we are facing. So what can we do to fix this? Well, let's explore how we can fix that in the next video. Anytime that we have common JSX elements across multiple different pages of our application, what we can do is we can add that JSX element into a layout.tsx file and then actually remove it from our page.tsx files. So let me go ahead and describe exactly what I mean by that. 
So when we created our application, we got a layout.tsx file by default. And this right here is just a functional based component and it's called the root layout. And you can see that we have just some normal JSX here. So we have the HTML, we have the head, then we have the body. And then within the body, we're rendering the children. And hopefully you're familiar with this. This is the children props. And in essence, what this is, is the JSX of the page that we're currently on. So if we're on the root page, then the children is going to render this right over here. If we're on the search page, then it's going to render this right over here. So it's kind of similar to this, like so, and then, and then again, and so on and so on. And hopefully you guys get the point of this. Now, what we can do is we can actually utilize this root page to our advantage because we know that this is always just going to render the component that we're currently on. So what we can do here is we can start adding other components, maybe to the top, to the bottom that we need to, that are going to exist on every single page. So what, am, what do I mean by that? Well, what we can do here is let's say we want to add a nav bar. So I'm going to say nav bar. I'll say nav bar. And then over here, I can say children like so. And now let me just zoom in here. You can see we get this nav bar. And if I were to move to slash search, for example, we get the exact same nav bar. So it's, it's there as well. If I were to click on a restaurant, because this is defined in the actual layout, it's always going to be there. So we can use this for our advantage. So remember what we had here. Let me go ahead and just present this again. So no matter what, without fail, we always have this main tag, we have the second main tag, and then we have the nav bar. So we can actually define this in the layout rather than defining it in the page itself. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go right about here. I'm going to go ahead and just copy what we got here and I am going to define it. And let's go ahead and auto import in the nav bar. And I'm going to go ahead and just close off the main tag. So we have to close these off as well, of course, close off the main tag, close off the main tag. And now what we can do is we can actually save this. And when we save this, we get some funky behavior. So you can see here, <laughs> really, really funky, pretty ugly. So we get this nav bar and we get this other nav bar and everything else is to the, uh, is everything else is like shifted to the right. Now, the reason why we have two nav bars is because the layout is defining a nav bar and also our page is defining a nav bar. Now, the whole point is that we actually remove the nav bar as well as these main tags from the page so we can, well, be a little bit more consistent and a little bit more dry. So now what we can do is we can just remove this, remove that. And in this case, now we can go ahead and just save that and we're completely fine at this point. So we can go ahead and just save that and we're good. And now let's do the same thing with the search. I'm going to remove this and remove this. Now remember, uh, React components require at least one uh, parent element, not multiple parent elements. So what we can do to offset this is just use these uh, fragments. And there we go. So now we're done with that. And over here, again, let's remove this and remove that. Again, we are going to have to use a fragment in this case. So let's go ahead and utilize that fragment, save that. And then over here, again, remove this. Like, look how much cleaner our code is getting. And then over here, we can utilize this, save that. And I believe there's one more page.tsx file that I'm missing. And it is, uh, is it the reservation page? I believe so. Yes, it is. So we can go over here. We can remove this. Oops. Apologies. Let's use a fragment. Oh, what's going on here? Let's do a fragment and we'll get rid of this. And over here, actually, this one, I feel like doesn't really need a fragment. You can just actually remove that. And of course, uh, another good thing to do, I'm not sure why it's yelling at me here. That's fine. Another good thing to do is actually to go ahead and just remove all of the unused uh, components at this point, because we're not using the nav bar. We're not using the link. We're not using all of these things. And we could always have linters that kind of check, check for this as well. Um, and there we go. So now we get the same exact effect, but now our code is significantly cleaner. So now you can see if I'm on this page, same thing. I still have the nav bar, still have this kind of really nice white screen, 
but now our code is significantly cleaner. If I go back over here again, significantly cleaner. And if I ever have to make any sort of change to this, you know, again, uh, the, uh, the UI team, they did a bunch of research and they said that this has to be pink. Well, I would just go to the layout now and I would just say pink of 400. I don't know if that's a real color and there we go. So we've changed this to pink of 400. So now, you know, our users can experience this throughout our application. So now if I were to go to, let's just click on this. So now it's pink over here as well. And if I were to click on this, you can see it's going to be pink or click here. You can see it's pink all over. So now we have defined the layout for our whole application. Of course, I don't like it pink. It's not really good. So we're going to keep it as white. So hopefully you guys understand the powers of layout and how we can really clean your code and maintain dry code. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. We made tremendous progress in keeping our code nice and dry by utilizing layouts, but I think we can even take it one step further. So let's go to the restaurant slash slug directory right here. And I'm going to open up the page.tsx file that is within that directory. And then I'm going to go to the menu and I'm also going to open that up and we're going to look for any common features here. So you can see here that within these two pages, we have a header. Okay. And this is the exact same header. So notice that this one is dot dot. So moving out of the menu directory, well, this one is move, this one is in the menu directory. So this is the exact same header. And then we have this div that has flex margin auto justify between similarly over here, we have this flex margin auto justify between. Okay. And then we have this other div that has a BG and this one is a width of 70. Whereas this one's a width of 100. So this one is different. However, these two components, these two or, the, or this component and this JSX element is exactly the same. So I think what we can do is you can utilize layouts for this. However, we cannot utilize the layout.tsx file that we have defined right over here because this is the root layout that is going to apply to every single page. In our case, we only want to utilize a layout for these two pages specifically. So how do we do that? Well, in this case, we can utilize nested layouts. So we can go to the directory where we want to utilize the layouts, which in this case is going to be the slash restaurant slash slug directory. And then within that, we can create a layout.tsx file. And this layout.tsx file is only going to apply to all the pages.tsx files that is within this slug directory. So it's going to apply to this one and this one. So again, let's go ahead and just create this. So I'm going to create a layout dot tsx file and this is going to take in this is going to be a functional base component so i'm just going to say export default and we'll say function and we'll say restaurant layout you can call it whatever it is that we want i'm just going to say restaurant layout so let's fix that let's go ahead and invoke that and then right over here we're going to go ahead and return so we're going to return the header as well as the div. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Let's add a main tag here. And we're going to copy the header as well as the div. Now the header is going to come from uh, the root directory. So make sure it's from the root directory. So we can go ahead and save that. Now the issue that happens if we kind of leave it like this, if I were to click on this, you can see we just see the header. So of course, now what we need to do is utilize the children prop. Now the children, if we were to look at this layout over here, we actually get it from, um, we get it from uh, uh, the parameters. So what we can do here very similarly is also accept the children. And over here, this is just giving it a type. We can talk about types a little bit later, but this is just giving it the prop type in TypeScript. So now what we can do is, oh, oops, sorry. I did this in the wrong page. Let's go here in the layout. This, this is, that's where it should be. So let's go ahead and just copy that again. Let's go back to the layout. Again, we're going to paste that in there and then right over here. So right within this div, we can also render our children. And again, this is only going to apply. You can see it's, already, it's getting really funky, but it's only going to apply to the pages that are nested. So it's also going to apply to this one. However, if I go to the home page, it's not going to apply. 
So now what we can do is we can go ahead and just remove all of our different, uh, we're gonna remove this header, we don't need it anymore. And then we could also remove this div. We don't need that div anymore. And so the children is just going to be this. So now if we save that, we should be fine. And similarly over here, let's go back to this page. We don't need this header and we don't need this div. So we don't need the header, we don't need the div. And actually this is, uh, well, no, I thought it was a parent component, but it's not. Okay, so there we go. So that should fix things. So you can see here, it still is looking exactly the same, even though we have really uh, extracted out our code. So nested components very, very, uh, or sorry, nested layouts are very, very powerful. And they really allow us again to keep our code nice and dry. And whenever we need to make a change to a particular layout, we can easily do that instead of going through every single page.tsx file. The next thing that I would like to talk about is the tab title that we have here. So right now it says create next app. I personally don't like that. I want it to say open table and I want it to change for every single page that we are on. So how are we going to accomplish that? Well, we're going to accomplish that with the head.tsx file. And luckily by default in the app directory, we do have a head.tsx. TSX file. So as you can see here, we have this head and this is where we provide all of the meta information that we want for our specific page. And you can see here, we have a create next app. And I can of course just change this to open table, open tables like so. I can go ahead and change that. And if I refresh my application, it should say open tables, as you can see right over here. Might be a little bit small, but just check your tab. It says open tables. Now I might want to have a different title and maybe even a different link, a fav icon for every particular page. Well, how do we do that? Well, in each directory, we can add a head.tsx file. So for example, if I were to go to the search page, let's go to the search page right now, you can see that in the search page, it says open table. And actually it's a little bit bothering me. I'm not sure if they use open tables, they don't. It's fine, we'll just, we'll keep it as that. So I'm gonna say here in the search tab, I wanna have uh, search and then dash open table. But right now it's just open tables. I don't, I don't want that. And by the way, it should be open table, not open tables. So how do we accomplish this? Well, what we can do here is within the search, we can create a head.tsx file. I can go ahead and just copy what we got here. And then we can just paste that in there. So whenever we're in the search route, it's going to render the head over here. So I can have something like search and then dash open table, just so we know that we're on the search page. So you can see here now it's search dash open table, or maybe, I don't know, search restaurants, something like that. I don't know what the best uh, uh, URL is. Probably your SEO team will give you that information. And now let's go ahead and do the same thing when we click on a particular restaurant. Now this one should be dynamic, but of course now because we're hard coding everything, uh, we're just going to make it hard coded, but later on, we're going to make it dynamic. This should be the name of the restaurant that we're currently on. So again, let's go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to go to the restaurant and we're going to go to the slug portion. And then we're going to create a head.tsx. And over here, I'm just going to hard code the name of this restaurant. So let's just refresh this. It's erroring out because we have an empty file here. I'm just gonna hard code the name of this restaurant and I'll just have like a tab of open table like that. There we go, that looks pretty good to me. And now if I go to the menu of that particular restaurant, I am gonna go right over here. We're gonna create another page.tsx file. And over here, we're gonna go ahead and paste this in. And this time we're gonna change it to, let's say menu of this particular restaurant. So now let's go to the menu. Now you can see here that the tab changes to menu of. Now we're missing one more page, which is the reserve page. So let's say reserve slash this particular restaurant here. Well, I'm gonna say, uh, let's copy this, or let's copy the whole thing. And let's go to the page or the reserve. And then where we have our page directory, I'm gonna say head.tsx. 
paste that in there and we'll say reserve at this particular restaurant. So let's go ahead and save that. And if we were to come here, you see reserve at this restaurant. So you can see that this is a lot better than create react app. We can even make it dynamic going across different pages, which is incredible. We can also change the fav icon. So again, if, if we wanted to, we can change this particular fav icon to whatever it is that we want. And just to kind of prove that to you, let's just go ahead here, just say five icon download. I'm just gonna download any fav icon. I don't know, let's see here. Let's go to this website and let's download two five icons. I think this one's a converter. I don't want the converter. I just want to download a fav icon. Okay. So let's look for a restaurant fav icon and you don't have to do this, but this is just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to go restaurant. Let's see what we got here. Okay. So we got this restaurant fav icon. So let me go ahead and just download this. You know what? I like this one better. I'm going to go ahead and just download this fav icon. And by the way, the five icon is the thing that you see right over here on the tab. So let me go ahead and I want to download it as a fav icon. And I'm just going to download it. I don't really care. Let's go ahead. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plop that into the public directory. So this, this public directory is where uh, we store all of our different assets. So I'm going to go ahead, just grab that. And unfortunately, this is a PNG. I thought it would be a fav icon, but I guess it's not. Let me go ahead and try to download it again. I said fav icon and I wanted it to be, I'm not sure why it's giving me a PNG. I didn't ask for a PNG. No, I don't want a PNG. I want a fav icon, download that. That's still a PNG, <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, uh, let's go over here to flat icon. And I don't believe flat icon. You know what we can do? We can just go back to this site that converts your PNG to a five icon. So I'm going to go here. Let's just convert this. We're going to go ahead and download. So now we got the zip file. That's a fav icon. And let's go here. And I am going to just grab this fav icon dot co. And let's go to our website, wherever that is, right about here. And we're gonna just replace the current fav icon. So now you can see here that we're using this fav icon. And if I were to go to my website now and refresh, now this is the real open table, I want this open table. It, it might take some time for it to refresh, but actually no, there you go. You can see we have this really cool fav icon and we can change it across different pages. I, I just don't wanna go through that. But, but that's just another thing that we can do. We can go ahead and change it across different pages, but now we're not using the next default one.